everyone, this is Libby Fanny and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to compost. Um, so I got a lot of great questions about this on my Instagram. Make sure you're following me there at Libby Z Flanagan um, so that you can make sure you have your questions answered in the videos. And I'm going to start with going over how you should compost and then I'm going to go over what you can compost and then I'm going to go over how you can compost if you live in an apartment, which was a very common question on my Instagram. And then lastly, I'm going to show you what we do here at my house. So let's go into why you should compost. 60% of what's in our landfills is organic matter. That means over half of what we're throwing away could be going to composting and being put back in farms and gardens. A big question that I have when I first started looking into this is what's the difference between it breaking down in a landfill and breaking down in my backyard? The answer is when it breaks down in a landfill, it's breaking down without any air present. It's all piled up on top of each other. They're never mixing it. And many times it's buried underground. So it's not getting any air. That means it's going through something called anaerobic digestion, which basically means it's going to be releasing methane. Um, and that process is much slower. So the organic matter, any food waste, will be present in the landfill for much, much longer. I've even seen some things where they've found preserved avocados and guacamole for 50 years in landfills because of how slow this process is. Um, and it's releasing methane gas, which is a very potent greenhouse gas. As opposed to when it breaks down in a compost pile, it's gonna be getting aerated. So it's going through aerobic digestion, which is much faster and it releases CO2 instead of methane, which is still a greenhouse gas, but it's five times less potent. So, and the compost, the organic matter gets to be put back into gardens and farms. So that is a really good reason why you should compost. It's gonna release less harmful gas. It's gonna break down more quickly and not be contributing to huge landfill piles. All right, so now what you can compost. The basic rule of thumb that you wanna to use to figure out what you can compost is did it come from the ground? Is it a plant? So all vegetable scraps, all fruit, can all be composted. On top of that, you can compost paper, paper towels, um, any paper materials or cardboard because they came from a tree. So all that can be composted. A really good one is coffee beans. That's a great thing to compost. And again, came from a tree. So anything that comes from plants can be composted um, with the one exception of eggshells. Of course, eggshells come from an animal, but they're actually really good for your compost. Anything else that comes from an animal, any meat or dairy products, those cannot be composted. So keep those out of your compost. Um, you want to try and keep your compost at a 50% brown to 50% green ratio. And what the science behind that is, is you want 50% carbon, 50% nitrogen. But it doesn't have to be super exact. I know that can sound kind of intimidating, like, oh gosh, how do I keep track that I have exactly 50% of these things? It doesn't have to be super exact. And if you ever put something in there that's technically not compostable, it will eventually break down. It's just gonna take longer. So no big deal if you mess up, if you put something in there or if you've already put something in there that wasn't compostable, you're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer to use that compost. So just let it sit. Yeah, so like I was saying, you wanna keep at, at that 50% green, 50% brown ratio. Things that would be in the brown category are leaves, paper, paper towels, um, coffee beans, all those things are in the brown car, uh, category. They have lots of carbon in them. And in the 50% green category, it's all your vegetables and fruit scraps and grass clippings. You wanna make sure you're not putting too many grass clippings in because they can kind of form like a mat when they get wet and that can keep the air from getting in. An important part of compost is you wanna keep it aerated. Um, so I try and kind of mix my compost whenever I dump my bin in, just give it a little mix with the pitchfork. That's all I do. Um, it, People do like make tumblers and stuff to really get it aerated more quickly and so they can use their compost much more rapidly, but I don't have that here and I haven't found it to be necessary. And lastly, what you can do if you're living in an apartment. Um, so I looked up a couple different options that all these sound really good to me. The first is something called a food cycler. It had really good reviews on Amazon and I'll link it down in the description box below. Um, but basically you just put your food in there and turn it on and it, the next day, the compost is ready to use. So you can go ahead and put it in your potted plants. You can go ahead and add it to your plants on your porch or patio. Um, and that can be a really good way to fertilize those plants. Two other ways that are gonna be really good for your community. The first one is go to your local farmer's market. Um, they probably have a place where you can drop off compost. Um, and that way you can help support the farmers that you're buying produce from by giving them some fertilizer back that they can use on their farm. 
And the other community method is looking for a community garden. Um, community gardens are starting to pop up everywhere, particularly in areas where there's food deserts. And those are great causes to support. So check out your local community garden and see if they have an area where you can drop off compost to help support that garden. Okay, so I think that that is everything. I'm sure there'll be more things along the way as I'm showing you guys what we do here in our system, but let's get into the rest of the video. All right, this is the first part of our system right here. This is a compost bucket from OXO, which I will put the Amazon link down in the description. I love this compost bucket. The best thing about it is this lid. Sorry, it's a little nasty right now. Um, it helps to keep all the odors in when I can close it. I have a few flowers I need to compost, but um, when I can close it, it is so nice. It keeps everything in there, no problem. It's a decent size so that, I mean, I only have to take my compost out like once a week probably, and it keeps everything in there and with no smells at all. And the nice thing about this is that the lid comes off and that makes it like more like a bucket. And then I can wash this super easy. So I'll let this soak while I go out and dump my compost out and I can just carry it like a bucket now. All right, so like I said, we take our compost out about once a week. Um, and something that I've been very surprised and happy with is it doesn't really even, it doesn't even really smell at all. So um, we don't have any issues with that and we haven't had any problems with any like critters getting into it or anything like that. Um, so that's been good. That's something I love this bin for is how big it is and how much compost that it fits. So we keep our compost pile right in here in the garden um, to keep the dog from getting into it. That's probably the only critter that we have had problems with. And this is the bin that my husband made for me. You'll notice the side is made of chicken wire because like I said before, you want to get a lot of air into your system. And so I'm just going to dump all of our scraps and we have some flowers in there. And then I'm going to give it a little mix with our pitchfork. Just gonna kind of give it a little mix up. You can see we got some grass clippings. You can see a potato in there. Um, tea bags, that's another thing that I compost. If you just read, look, look up the company that you get your tea bags from, it will tell you online if it's compostable or not. And there we go. That is it. You want to close it up. Um, you don't want it to be totally waterproof. Some water does need to be able to get in there, um, but you don't want it to be soaking. So that's why we have that little lid on it. The other feature that this compost bin has is that this piece right here, you can see it has these little notches. It's, it can slide out once you're ready to use and the good compost is down on the bottom. My husband made this totally out of reclaimed wood. So everything is recycled. Um, so it doesn't look perfect, but I love that it's made out of recycled wood and it makes it really easy to access the compost that's at the bottom. So that's it, that's the whole system. Once this is done breaking down, I'll take the compost out of the bottom and I'll use it to refill and sprinkle in my beds when fall comes and I plant new vegetables. That's all that I have about how to compost. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the description box down below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That really helps to support me. Thanks for hanging out.